Did you have your issues. fitness challenge while you were competing against others, and so then you had to move forward and pass the baton to the next person once you completed your challenge, and then they had to do their challenge. So my number one mindset challenge with that is people are relying on me, and if I don't go quick enough, we're not going to win. I'm not doing it. <laughs> that is immediately what my brain said. Forget it. Not doing it. And my brain also said, uh, that's outdoors, and I'll get hurt, and I'll this, and I'll, no, I'll just stick to the gym. I'm good. Doing my independent little workout all by myself. But I leader shifted and said, okay, I'm going to show up for my team because they all were like, come on.
It was nothing like ours. Yes. Santa was just by a home baby, sitting in a corner over there outside, and the presents were on the floor, not even wrapped. Yes. And it was just like, okay, next, next, whatever. Yes. Yeah. So uh, then I brought them some prizes and gifts. That was the only thing was there. So yeah. it was so much worth it. Yeah. But I didn't want to go. <laughs> That's exactly it, though, right? You get so blessed when you push through the hard stuff to hit the results, right? It's such a blessing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Strength and growth come through continuous effort and struggle. Napoleon Hill. So why do you want to become a better leader? Anyone? For me, it feels good, uh, and I see my leader role as um, leading buyers. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Usually, first-time buyers. You know, yes. they have no like it's such a big transaction; they have no idea. Yeah. So I see it as I'm um, just growing, leading them. Yeah. To this first huge transaction in their life. Yes. And that's, that's yeah what I'm focused on. And yeah. I think. And so, so why do you want to be a leader of them? Uh, it makes me feel good. Makes you feel good. Yeah. Fantastic. Anyone else? Why do you want to be a leader? Well, I think that you have to be first a leader for yourself. Yeah. Because we can get excused like, well, there's nobody to follow. So I don't have to do it, right? There's nobody. Yes. So you have to lead yourself to the path that you're going to either self taught. Correct. Or to find somebody that you can shadow, that you can learn from. Yeah. Because if nothing else, we have Google yeah. and YouTube. <laughs> so we have no excuses. But we have to lead ourselves to that path. Otherwise, we just have excuses. So why do you want to be the leader of yourself? Because I don't want to be in the back. OK. She miss. doesn't want to be in the back. <laughs> themselves. We live in a world that is so fallen and broken and people need people to come alongside and you know how you are in your personal life is going to be affected in your business as well. Yes. So if you're really feeling down, you're really going through something in struggles and you don't know how to navigate your way through it, to be able to come alongside and actually so, show somebody how to navigate through a, an element in their personal life is going to translate and actually help their, their business as well. Yes. And I get a lot of self-satisfaction when I see others succeed and I can help others to that regard and just to know that I did something that helped to make a difference in somebody's life. So it just yes. comes from like a, like a really a, a part of, of caring and contribution. So. so what I heard was that you, like Amy, you just feel really good. Mm -hmm. Right, that's the motivation to you. Like you just feel really good when you see someone succeed, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you've been the vessel to help them do mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Right. Thank you. That's beautiful. So leaders who focus on 
perks, right? Let's look at that in your workbook. Leaders who focus on perks. So what does it say? Go ahead, Patricia, read those questions. What I will receive. What will I receive? Mm -hmm. Me, 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 correct. How will this decision affect me? How long this will take me? How will you give me to stay in the game? What will you give me what to stay in the game? <laughs> There's a lot of me, me, me there. Ah, uh, there <laughs> is, right? Just have me call them. Yeah. <laughs> right? And I'll be really honest, when I first got into leadership, like um, when my son, he started Cub Scouts, like I kind of like, ha like if, if you're familiar with Cub Scouts or Girl Scouts <coughs> at all, like you're, like when you come in, you're either a leader or you're not, right? And so I was like, oh, well, I'll just leave so that way I can control the meetings. I can control my schedule. So honestly, in the beginning of when I stepped into leadership, it was about me and controlling my calendar and being all about what I could do, right? It was, and I probably shifted maybe just two years ago from me, me, me to realizing like, oh, it's them. Like I had set our team goal for how many closings we would have for buyers, and she was like, oh, I don't want to close that many. I'm like, what's wrong with you? That's about, now who's going to do it? <laughs> and that was probably like three years ago, yeah. and that was my first like aha moment. Uh-oh, uh she don't want to do what I want to do. <laughs> right? And so I had to figure that out, right? So leaders who focus on price. Who can read that one for me? <coughs> Thank you. What can I give? What can I give? How will this decision affect others? How far can we go? And what must I give to stay in the game? Mm -hmm. Right, right. What can I give? How will this de decision affect others? And how far can we go? And what must I give to stay in the game? Lou had three qualities all great coaches possess. He didn't take anything for granted. He was an excellent teacher, and he was superbly organized. George Cal. So our number one, right, is reality. Leaders recognize that everything worthwhile is uphill. Mm -hmm. You saw that on Saturday. You got up. You saw that it was raining, you saw that it was sprinkling, I was with you, I'm like, oh, I'm not getting up, I'm not doing this. It's slippery outside. And then in the end, we both celebrated, woo-hoo! We won, like, I was excited to see everyone who was so excited that our team, we did third place, right? Our team came in third, right? And you got to see how an event ran okay and how well you're doing in comparison to it right and you got to be a blessing to those veterans mm -hmm. right and it was all uphill there was no like cheerleading myself i'm so excited to get up and do this today <laughs> right <laughs> none, none that's where you look at the uh the bold lines is you can have reasons or results but not both <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> So tell me this, right? Because Nathan asked me a great question today in our team meeting, and he asked Amy the same question. Why do you want to help that many families buy a house this year, right? And he asked Amy, why do you want to help that many families as well, right? So I mentioned that because the next question for us is how do you respond to your leadership potential when it's all uphill? <clears throat> I put on there, keep pressing on. This is where you check your motivation and need accountability. Uh, an encourager, a mentor, a coach, someone to help keep you moving um, when the hill seems too steep to climb. Mm. Right? I'm, I'm listening to a new book that I was so upset because my coach suggested it. Mm -hmm. And I started listening to the book and I thought, 
this is BS. Why he told me to hit this is like, has nothing to do with me, what I'm gonna learn from it. <laughs> but I said, okay, I'm not gonna stop, I already paid for the book, so I'm gonna listen to it. <laughs> so, the first three chapters were just like, okay, whatever, pay to listen to it. But, in the book, it hit me a phrase yesterday when I was driving to the van that it said, motivation, it takes you so long. Mm -hmm. You need mental toughness mm. because motivation goes when everybody closes the door. Right. So once I, it, it, all the cheerleading and all the beautiful, the motivation goes with it. Yeah. So it's up to you, either you're motivated or not. You have to be mental tough to pull through. <clears throat> because motivation sometimes is not enough to get you through it. So then I challenge and, and encourage you to think of it this way. As we lead a team, when you get tired and the motivation's all gone, it's exactly what he said, right? You need an encourager. You need a cheerleader. You need someone who's going to come alongside you and remind you, hey, this is why we're doing this. This is how we're doing it, right? You need that. And we have a team. Because Abe and I said point blank today, man, when it gets really tough and we're going uphill, we both sit down and take a break. <laughs> and sometimes we dwell a little longer there than we need to be. <laughs> right? I think that's a, a good thing, too, to keep in mind with our clients. Because I know Amy said the other week that she always does listing our buyers consultations where yes. she goes over and I always tell people like whether we're at Starbucks or whatever you know when when it's easy and we're talking about what, what we want and everything um, you know it's it's our job to re remember that because there is a, always a point well not always but almost always a point in the transaction where everybody's ready to just throw and just be like I'm out you know and, and, and it's our job to kind of remind them why they're doing what they're doing, all the things that when they were calm and not like stressed out and were super rational um, during that meeting, you kind of say, hey, remember when we were having Starbucks two months ago? And like, this is why you're, you're doing this. motivation. Right, yeah. and, and so it's, it's, I think it's our job too, as leaders of that transaction, you know, or that process, <coughs> whatever you want to call it, is to m keep them motivated, remember why, because yeah. their motivation does run out a lot of times. At, yeah. Especially if the biggest one is the sellers who are buying. Yes. That is so difficult because you, you could have somebody on both sides of you, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, and you're in the middle and yes. sometimes you, they feel like, hey, this person's getting the better end of it and this person, and I'm stuck in the middle, you know? Like, yes. I think it's important to remind those people why they're doing what they're doing. I love what John Maxwell said, right? He said that they bought land we're gonna build a church, mm -hmm. right? Thought they were gonna do all of that and develop it, and what did he say? Four years. Four, Four years, years. Yes. and it ended up being how long? 13, 13. 13 years, and how yes. over budget? Yeah, a lot. How, yeah. Long? how do you push through that, right? How do you do it? And yet it still happened, mm -hmm. right? And then you reflect on it, and you go like, oh, okay. What could have I done differently? Just bring people around you who have the skill set to help you. And so that's when you've created a community, mm -hmm. right? A real community. Well, that part of the book was the the guy that was in the con or not concentration camp, the, the Hanoi Hilton, the prisoner of war yes. from Vietnam. That subtle nuance of like being optimistic and being faith, you know, having faith that the end result is gonna work out and him to say like the people that died were the people that were optimistic mm -hmm. because they weren't aware of their current reality yeah. and they were always kind of hoping for something to get better. Yeah. And that was like, I don't know, that was a different way of, because everyone always says, oh, you need to be more optimistic. And you know, and um, sometimes I don't think that is the right, like according to him, you know, right. his his attitude was, you need to have faith over the long run, but you need to be grounded in the reality of what's happening right, right. now. You need to map it out. Uh 
Right. Right. You need to. You can't just be out. optimistic that everything's going to work out because well, you mean, could, like those guys, that they died of a broken heart because they just never got released. Yeah. Well, like, well, the reality of like an overpriced listing, you know, let's be optimistic. The market will eventually catch <laughs> up to it. No, no, it won't. <laughs> you know, so it's a matter of you know coming to you know, put it in perspective for them Correct. in the grips of reality. We can be positive all we want, but this is the reality of what the market's doing. And Correct. Like, yeah, overpriced listing just is not good. Correct. So. Correct. In sales, you always have to remind people of the benefits. What are the benefits that you're going to receive by getting through this? Keep them focused on. Here's the benefit. This is tough right now, but if you do this, mm -hmm. here's here's where here's what your goals are. Here's what your benefit you will receive if you just keep pushing through this. We'll, we'll bring the price down, whatever it is. But your benefit is you get the house sold. Mm -hmm. You'll get into the house you're trying to buy. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I actually said once to a to a, a seller that was the overlisting your price. I say. Let's put your, yourself in the in the eyes of a buyer for a moment. Would you buy your house at the price you're asking for? And there was a long hesitation. <laughs> but I'm selling it. I, I'm looking to get the most of it. I understand that. But if we're going to get your price, we have to have a buyer that actually sees eye to eye with your price. And right now, there's no buyers out there that are seeing eye to eye with your price. Right. So you know, so it's the it's tough getting... ones are when the buyer, when the seller says yes, I would pay the price for my house. Right. That's a tough one. Then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So far, I haven't had that, but yeah. Um, I've had that happen three times. So what we won't is the word that you're looking for. Do will keep us from being successful a lot more than what we can do. There is no success without sacrifice. If you succeed without sacrifice, it is because someone has suffered before you. If you sacrifice without success, it is because someone will succeed after you. So what are you willing to sacrifice to grow into your leadership potential? My lunch, I sacrifice it every time I show up here. Right? Literally Mondays, I get like two bites and I don't eat until four o'clock. Literally Mondays. Right, that's just my crazy Mondays. I put down like the same type of time. Yes, sacrificing time, time um, sacrificing convenience. Yes. Um, I'd rather have not gotten up today and just said, you know, I'm just gonna go to the gym and just hang out and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> also, the sacrifice of quick results, mm -hmm. looking for the easy way, real, not realizing that you know this is a, a marathon, not a sprint. Yes. We need to condition ourselves for that uphill climb. You know, make sure we have our tools. Make sure our mindset is right. Make sure that we're we're in the right shoes, so to speak. You know, if you literally picture a mountain that you're climbing, you know, and then uh, the sacrifice of an easy road. Mm. You know. Yes. Yeah. What have others sacrificed for your success? This, this question because <clears throat> sometimes we get um, arrogant. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it all myself, and it's not true. Mm -hmm. You know, there's when somebody succeeds is because there's somebody down the the road to help you somehow to get there. But when you are like, no, I I done it. I I killed myself, I did all this, and then you forgot there was people in your way that help you and cheer you up. Yes. So <laughs> I think that recognize that other people sacrifice for you is hard. Yeah. Paying attention to it, reflecting on it, being thankful and grateful for it, right? For me, I mean, that one was, I, I, I had the opposite a uh, reaction that Patricia had because for me I thought it was a very easy question. Like both my parents grew up very poor yeah. and like they worked hard and like my dad worked at the post office for a long time and like it was killing him and he, they they were doing that to give my brother and I opportunity you know that they didn't have. Sure. Um, you know live in a you know home that always had food and you know, like my dad didn't grow up with that yeah. um, and so they he sacrificed a lot, you know. Um, a lot of his issues <laughs> that he might have, but he gave up a lot 
drawer for my brother and I. Sure. You know, so like I, I recognize that. Now as an adult, it's much easier to recognize, but yeah, um, yeah I mean, to be, I mean, we're, we're all very lucky to be in this like pocket of the world, yes. you know, and to be born here under whatever circumstances we all came from, like we're all very blessed and lucky. So, um, so to know that my dad really made from like literally dirt poor nothing to where he is now is like a huge sacrifice that he made. 100%. People sacrifice, right? My husband sacrifices time with me, right? He doesn't get my time Saturday and Sunday, right? Because I'm out helping buyers and sellers, right? My kids don't have their traditional Saturday and Sunday with us. Do you know? It's the same thing for you guys. Same exactly. You know, so you have to manage that and you have to recognize it and then you have to schedule that so that you don't lose that. And be grateful that they're willing to sacrifice that. Right? Be grateful. Mm -hmm. Right? Because that's not easy. Retain faith that you will prevail in the end, regardless of the difficulties, and at the same time, confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. Jim Collins. Hope empowers me to believe that I can make the climb. Hard balances my expectations and prevents me from being overly optimistic. Describe an experience when you wavered between Hope and hard. <clears throat> when I was in Mexico and I choose to live the comments without my parents, I had uh, two full-time jobs in Mexico and I dislocated my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And they gave me a medical leave 15 days. So even though I have a shifty car, I drove 56 hours to come here. With a broken shoulder. Yes, in excruciating pain. So I had hope that was gonna accomplish something, but it was really hard. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. That pain, yeah. right? But it just gave me, just like, I just had to get there. Mm. Thank you. So that is, you remember that? When you feel discouraged, yeah. hold on to that. That's why you did it. Yeah. Thank you. Example, leaders acknowledge that they must climb the hill first. They must climb the hill first. I don't want to climb the hill. I don't want to climb any hill. <laughs> That's hard work. Your muscles get sore. You get dirty. But you gotta check it out and see what's going on for people. And once you get up there, boy. Leaders see things before other people do, and they see more than other people do. However, what sets great leaders apart from all other leaders is this. They act before others and they do more than others. When leaders are willing to pay the price, they gain moral authority. When have you been willing to pay the price to go before the people you lead? You did it, right? You did it. Three before and more characteristics. Follow me leaders believe in themselves before more than others do. How would you describe your self-belief factor? Do you believe in yourself? Yes. You have to. You have to. <coughs> Otherwise no one's going to believe in you. Correct. Mm -hmm. You have to because if you don't, no one else does. And there's many times where I've lost faith in myself, right? I'm sure we all experience that. Mm -hmm. 
I guess I'm all alone. Oh. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Right? And yet, the fact of the matter is, we get back up mm -hmm. and we do it. And we do it just a little better. Mm -hmm. Right? We just do it a little better every time. We had that conversation in our team meeting today. We talked about, like, well, we've done this last year. Next year, we're going to do the same thing. Well, what we want to do is twice as much than what we did last year. We don't have a clue how to do that. So it's probably going to be really messy. It's probably going to be really overwhelming. And it's probably not going to be quite where we want to hit. And yet our hope is that it's going to be more and better. That we're going to do it better. Right? That we're going to. We have to have that self-belief. With Patricia, I encouraged her. You've already done that. You knocked it out. You had these many closings. You already know how to do that. Now move on to the next one. And just know that you're going to do what you already did. Right? Because you already did that. You know how to do it. There's one thing about an achievement. Once you achieve it, it can't be taken away from you. It can't. You've achieved it. <laughs> Unless you give it up. Right. Right. Follow me leaders set expectations for themselves before and more than others do. Where do you have a lot high level of expectation of yourself? Do it every day. High level of expectation. Who has high levels of, of expectation of yourself? Mm -hmm. I think we all generally do, correct? Mm -hmm. At least everyone in this room that I know <laughs> does, personally, because I know you all personally. I know you have high expectations of yourself. Well, it's like you, you create what, prior to Keller Williams, you would create what was called a to-do list. Yes. And now we've learned through the models how to refine that to what's called a success list, and you take care of the big rocks first. But then what happens is, is at the end of the day, you look at your success list and it almost looks as full as it did when you started and all of a sudden you look at almost like, I'm a failure, I didn't get through everything I needed to do and these were my big rocks and it was like, you know, so yeah, the struggle is real. So, um, but again, you know, what do you do, just wallow in it or do you just pick up, regroup and figure out what were, you know, what were the pieces that made the production slow down that day. Is there anything you could have done to change that? Maybe it's a matter of putting, you know, maybe too high of what we talk about reality on yourself. What's the reality of you being able to get through that much in one day, given the time and all the other, you know, appointments you have during the day? It might just be too much that you're loading on yourself, or like you, like you were saying, you need to leverage that with other people yes. and other opportunities. So you're not doing all the work yourself. Yes. So. Yes, that's the truth. Right? Follow me leaders make commitments to themselves before and more than to others. What are your non-negotiable commitments as a leader? Giving up. That's a non-negotiable for you. You're not giving up. Mm. I love that. Because most people, when it gets really hard, they go, never mind. I can't do it. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to do it. Right? You do it. They do that. I remember as a young girl, things got really hard. I was like, oh, man, I don't want to do that. That's stupid. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And then you go, oh, well, if I want to get here, I have to. Doesn't mean you have to do it specifically like it is, right? But you still have to do it. You have to figure it out. And I found for me, sometimes in my mind, I build up what I have to do as being much more difficult, mm -hmm. much harder than it really turns out to be. Sure. Mm -hmm. When I finally just say, okay, I'm going to break this down into little pieces, I'm going to do one step at a time. Sure. Look back and go, okay, that really wasn't as bad as I was imagining it to yeah. be. Yeah. A hundred percent, most definitely. Like I look now, I use what the tool that we call four one one for Keller Williams, right? 
And I'm excited because I go back to my 411 now and like I'm actually kind of using it the way it's meant to be used. And so I actually get to check something off and say, oh, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> and how did that make you feel? <laughs> oh, you do not know how excited it made me feel. And today we did our first team 411. Nice. Right? And that was exciting because like we all talked about it as a team and we put our one things on it. And now next week when we go and meet again, we'll check off the thing. Did we do it like we were supposed to? Right? We'll find out. Consistency. Leaders understand they never get to stop climbing. Oh, I want a break. Can I have a break? <laughs> right? The signature of mediocrity is chronic inconsistency. Jim Collins. I can tell you I personally struggle with that. I personally struggle with that. My coach will call me out on it. She'll say, do you want to be mediocre this week? And I'm like, that is mean. <laughs> I do not pay you a thousand dollars a month for you to say mean things to me. <laughs> You are only supposed to say nice things to me. <laughs> and it's the truth, right? The signature of mediocrity is chronic inconsistency, right? And it is the most challenging thing when things get really busy and you have a lot to do, then you drop the ball somewhere. Mm -hmm. And you drop the ball. And you drop the ball. And you become inconsistent, right? And I'm always working towards putting the right tools in place so that I don't drop my balls. <laughs> and I need the ones around me to help me to not drop those balls, right? It's challenging. How do you guys do it? How do you stay consistent? One day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> One day at a time, right? Well, I, I think in following the model, um, block timing. Yeah. Put put it on your calendar. Yeah. And put what your non-negotiables are on your calendar. Yeah. As it relates to your business, and even those things that are not in your business, you know, if there's things that are non-negotiable that have to be done every day, whether it's your exercise time, or your reading, your your prayer time, or anything, it's just to block time that in creates a level of consistency because after a while you're going to realize it's like second nature to you now, where now you don't have to be reminded, but it's nice to, like, I got that one, but like you said, it's a check mark that I was able to accomplish something that was on my success list for the day. Yes. So. I show up every day. Yeah. That's what I do. Just forces me to work, right? Right. Just forces me to, right? You get the text message from the client, forces you to work, right? So I'm like kind of really inconsistent still, very honest, right? Still kind of inconsistent, but I show up. Like right now, I'm just showing up. And one of my uh, one of my fitness coaches challenged me beyond that, right? To say, stop just showing up. Now set your intention, Lori. Set your intention for the day. Great, you're showing up. What's your intention for the day? And I was like, oh, I just want to just show up. <laughs> <laughs> and just do what everyone else wants me to do. I don't want to set an intention for today, right? What is your intention for the day? Not what does everyone else want you to do. What is your intention for today? Where is, all, where is one area where you need to be more consistent in your leadership? Consistency provides security for others. I don't show up and do the work. Guess what happens? We don't get any properties. We don't get any properties. I don't get any closings. I don't get any closings. I don't get any income. And then my team doesn't get paid. Then they don't work for free. <laughs> so I have to do the work. Mm -hmm. Are there any areas where your intentions and actions don't meet? Nathan reminds me all the time. Our goals and your intentions are not the same. They're not aligned yet. Yet. He's good at seeing that and he's good at holding me 
to the accountability of that. Mm. Now I have to learn to not push back on it. I have to receive it and move it forward. Consistency establishes your reputation. Consistency keeps you in the leadership game. What are you doing each day to stay on top of your game? Anyone doing something every day to stay on top of their game? My 411. What's that? My 411. Your 411. You're doing it every day? I look at it every day. Good. That's great. That's fantastic. I look at mine every day, too. You've been texting that you've been doing it, so I'm like, all right, that means I got to do it, too. <laughs> I get excited now to look at my 411. I didn't even care about my 411. I just did it because they said all the top agents did it. Now I'm excited, like, oh, I'm supposed to look. What am I going to do today? Let me look at my 411. Oh, those are the things I have to do today. And then I just add my success list to it, right, which is all the tasks that need to be done. I call them the promises I've made to people. Oh, you're coming into town on the 28th. Like it goes on my success list so that I follow up with that person to make sure that I have an intentional time with them while they're here, right? Those things go on that checklist of stuff to do so that I don't forget the promises I made to people. Trying to figure it out, that's all I'm doing. <laughs> Consistency compounds. Discuss the career of Cal Ripken Jr. What'd you guys hear about Cal Ripken? Anyone, anyone? He made the Hall of Fame because of his consistency. Mm. Surpassed Lou Gehrig. He showed up, like you said, every day. He showed up? Yeah. I think he was intentional, too. Yeah. I don't think he just showed up and said, maybe I'll get lucky, right? He said, this is what I'm going to do today. Mm -hmm. And he did it. He was intentional and purposeful. Yes. Right? Generally, people that do show up have that intention anyway. Sure. That's just their nature, but the fact they're actually following through. A lot of people that intention, but they never actually do it. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you get caught up in everyone else's needs. Mm -hmm. You're a pleaser. You want to help everyone. You want to make them happy. So you lose your intention. Right? Easy to do. He said, he, he said that he wasn't a superstar. Uh -huh. He said that there's great talent in the league and that he did have talent but his you know, advantage is that he knew the game, he showed up every day ready to play. <clears throat> and so it wasn't, it wasn't that he was just always the best, because he wasn't, you know, like he, but he just always was consistent and good. Fantastic. It's just showing up, being intentional about the day, doing the work, right? doing the work. So how can you apply what he did to your life and business? Instill it in yourself. Mm -hmm. And, well, for me, what I got from that story is his father instilled it to him, told him if you show up. So he was taught to do that, and he was consistent with it. Yes. So people that are not taught that, some people are not in all reality. So we have to kind of instill it in ourselves. Yeah. That's where I struggle. <laughs> so, we all struggle. Yeah. Thank you. We all do. Practice is not amazing. Studying is not amazing. Showing up is not amazing. <laughs> Working hard is not amazing. Asking questions is not amazing. Changing is not amazing. Trying is not amazing. Failing is really not amazing. <laughs> Trying again is not amazing. They are the price you must pay every day to reach your potential. If you pay that price and do it consistently, the final result will be amazing. It goes back to that layered learning mm -hmm. in the last chapter. It's just the experience yes. of all of those bullet points built over time. Yeah. Amy 
was just working on her growth plan, right? You all should think about what's my intentional growth plan for 2020. And so she was saying, well, cleaning the house and um, going to the gym. Those are all part of the things that you do. But growth is really in the mind, right? It's how do I expand my mind to have the layered lessons to become the person I want to intend to be at the end. And so if you're struggling with that, then go out 10 years and 20 years and 30 years and go, where do I want to be? And look at that and then work your way back from that. Does that make sense? Because if you see where you want to end up, then you got to do what's necessary to get there. Right? But you won't get there if you don't know where you want to end up. You'll just end up somewhere randomly. So now she realizes, like, oh, well, maybe, maybe my hubby and I will go to a marriage conference. Well, have a conversation with him. He may not be willing to. <laughs> <laughs> it may be a suggestion this year, and next year he takes you up on it, right? <laughs> Just know that you're always growing your mind professionally and personally. You're always doing the work. What is one thing you're going to start doing to compound the investment of being consistent? I write my list every day now, and I check it off. That's one thing. If I try to store it all in my brain, I lose it. Because I have too much. If I try to store it in my text messages, I have like 150 of those a day. I lose it. So I store it on a piece of paper. Someone had said to me, Caleb Hansen, he said it in a meeting we were in. He said, oh, you should write down every promise you make every day to other people. So that way you return the promises. I was like, that's brilliant. Like, that's brilliant. And then my coach said to me, like, oh, you should just put it on your 411. Wow, I'm getting better and better at this business, right? And it's allowing for me to be more consistent. What are you guys doing to be more consistent? Anyone have an idea? Is anyone struggling with inconsistency? Do you all do your profit and loss statement every month? I pay somebody to do it. Fantastic, it gets done, right? Do you review it every month? I do. Fantastic, because you pay for it. <laughs> Those numbers <laughs> come from you. <laughs> The one thing that I did this year, even though I really didn't want to, is I, jo I joined back on with the ALC mm -hmm. because I knew Tom would help keep me in line. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I felt like if I didn't do that, that I had a potential to drift into even further inconsistency. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I knew when I knew I didn't want to do it is when I kind of knew that I probably needed to do it. Thank you. Tom. That accountability, absolutely, in your yeah. And he's done Show it, like, for him, he, huh? and he's already been willing to do it and meet with me and go over the stuff. So, I do appreciate that. And, um, that's You're showing up, Tom. That's great. Thank you for doing that. So absolutely. It's, meant, it's, it's you know, it's kind of getting me back on track. Great, every one of you. I encourage you today to think about the areas that you're inconsistent, right? And say, What can I do to? Strengthen it just a little more. Just think about it. Write it down. Be really real. Feel it. I know my memory was my number one. And my memory, was, I have too much in my brain. So I have to write it down. I can't rely on text messages. I can't rely on email replies. Like you see that, right? You wait, okay, I send an email. When they reply, then you follow up again. That's inconsistent. Because what if they don't reply to you? <laughs> And then you're right. like, shoot, termites today. Because <laughs> no one checked in and followed up, and it was all on you. Right? So writing it down. Writing it down. Yeah. 
big for me. I don't know about you guys, but it's big for me. It's making me The dullest pencil person. is sharper than the sharpest mind. <sighs> Thank you. Say that again. The dullest pencil is sharper than the sharpest mind. That's right. That's I great. love that. That's great. I love that. So when my waitress doesn't write down my order, I get really irritated. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> It's right. gotta be wrong. Like, why don't you just write it down? They're trying to impress us with their memory. Yeah. You, you should have to say type. that to them <laughs> when they don't write it down. <laughs> okay. That's true. <laughs> Any questions? Any ahas that you'd like to share right now? Anything we didn't cover that you would like to be covered right now? Here's your chance. You know, being in sales for over 30 years, one thing I learned, it took a lot of years to learn this, talking about focusing on yourself versus focusing on others. Other people can tell very easily if you're focused on yourself. Mm -hmm. And they will they will remove themselves from you, whether it be a buyer, a team member, your, your family, whatever. If yeah. you're just focused on yourself, you may not see it, because I know it took me a long time to recognize that. Right. And I still struggle with that sometimes, you know, it's, it comes and goes maybe, but I have to always remind myself what is, I'm, I'm here to help them. Whatever it is that I'm selling, I'm trying to benefit them, not to benefit me, because they're going to see that. They're going to be able to see through that. Yeah. And you can't lead people that way. Right. You sure can't sell people that way. Right. We thank you. We just recently had, um, a buyer, we're closing down now, right? We just recently had a buyer who bought a house without us. And um, they they came up to me this weekend and they apologized and they said, oh, it was because of this reason and this reason that they went ahead. And I, and I was okay, like, I was thankful for the apology, right? But I didn't feel like it was necessary um, because what I saw in it was we didn't follow up enough. We didn't have enough value yet for that person to feel like they needed to include us. Because here's the reality. We cost money when people use us, right? So you need to show up and you need to bring the value, right? And so that's the reality of it, you know? with regards to it. Make sure that you become invaluable. That they go, you know what, I cannot do this without that person. That I need to have them. And the only way you become invaluable is by focusing on your growth. Focusing on becoming a better person who's focused on helping other people achieve their goals, right? When you get disassociated from a transaction, know it is because you didn't bring the value. Don't blame it on them. You just weren't invaluable. You were an expense. And you were an expense worth saving. Right? And if that happens, don't go away mad. Exactly. I and learned. Be, be as kind and polite as you possibly can because that's the exception, unfortunately, yeah. in business. And they will see that yeah. sometimes and come back to you later, possibly, as Definitely. a result of how you respond to that. Yeah, I just looked at our holes. I looked at it. I said our intention was never to get a deal, never to close a transaction. Our intention was to help a family. And we just weren't helpful enough. And I'm sorry for that. Right? That was our intention. Because nobody cares how much you know until they know that you care. Mm -hmm. So investing more. Investing more. Chapter 5 is our next chapter. We are off for the next two weeks. Why? Christmas. A holiday. Enjoy it. Be with your family. Be with the ones that you love. Invest in them. Just be the amazing people that you are. And please read chapter five while you're on vacation. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, guys. Have a great day. Thank you.
Where are you going? Come on. Come on.